Hello, welcome to this quick video about designing a new keel for my boat pipe dream. Basically, I'd taken off my old skegs off the outriggers about four years ago, and I wanted to put a better keel back on. Um, something that would give me water tanks, um, something that would give me a bit more room, headroom in the toilet, and a little bit of a nicer walk through the interior of the cabin. Um, there are a number of other things I had to consider, such as the dry out lean angle when she's on a concrete slipway, how buildable it would be, and also I was quite concerned to make sure that she would slide down the side of a wave nicely rather than dig in and try to capsize or something. So now I started drawing my initial designs, um, and in this stage I was trying to figure out how much buoyancy I could add, um, what sort of weight the keel would weigh, um, and the water tanks would weigh, and um, what sort of hydrodynamic design I was going to put in to try and have as minimal effect on boat speed as possible. So one of the main considerations I have is how much buoyancy I want to add to the boat, and I wanted to add around about 500 kilograms. So calculating buoyancy is quite simple. A uh, quick example here is length times height times width. Um, so 0.8 of a meter, 80 centimeters times 0.3 times 0.5 gives you a volume of 0.12 meters cubed and that directly then correlates to how much it will displace in water. So that will give me an additional 0.12 tons of displacement of um, buoyancy or 120 kilograms. Um, likewise below I've got volume of a cylinder which I've used quite a lot on Pipey um, and that's pi r squared which gives you the area of the circle and then you times it by length to get the area of the cylinder. So pi is 3.14 times r which is radius um, so you just take the radius uh, the diameter divide it in two to give you the radius and then times it by itself and then times that by the length which in this case then comes out to 1.92 tons. So then to get the weight of material that you're going to actually stick in you have to do exactly the same calculation. You have to calculate the volume of the material and then times it by the density of whatever you're using. So for example, I've taken a one meter by one meter sheet here, three millimeters thick, and that gives me 0 0.003 cubic meters. Now, if this were water, it would weigh three kilograms. But steel, for example, is between 7.7 .7 and 8 times heavier than water. It's denser than water. Um, so 7.7 .7 times 3, and you come up with 23 kilograms. So that sheet of steel, 1 meter by 1 meter by 3 millimeters, is 23 kilograms. Aluminium is a lot less dense. So that's only 2.7 times denser, so it will come out around about 8 kilograms. Glass fiber is about the same density as the water, so it would come out of 3 kilograms. I have to say, depending on the type of resin you use, the type of um, you know, various base materials and gel coat and stuff, um, oak is less dense than water, so it would come out at 2.7 kilograms. So this is why wood floats. Basically, if you had that sheet of 1 meter by 1 meter by 3 millimeter veneer of wood, and you threw it in the water, it would float and 300 grams of it would be stuck above the water surface. So you can see, you know, you look at this and you think, well, surely the best material then to use is oak or glass fibre, it's a lot lighter. Um, but then you've obviously got issues with wood of rotting, you've got issues of glass fibre of osmosis and being slightly worried when you go into corally type areas. Um, Aluminium is a very good material, um, but it's not it's not a third the weight of steel in reality because what happens is you would use a slightly thicker sheet um, because it's not quite as stiff as steel um, you'd use a bit more framing and of course the boat's weight is not just the material of the hull it's the engine and the propellers and everything else that's on the boat so a steel boat is I, I would say it's probably around about a third heavier than an aluminium boat um, the advantage of steel though is it's really easy to work with, um, it doesn't take very complicated welding equipment, it doesn't smell when you weld it either. Um, yeah, it rusts but then aluminium corrodes, so yeah, it's, 
there's choices really on what you want from it. But I like steel because it's just such a simple material to use and maintain. So some rough initial ideas jotted down and rough ideas of what the buoyancy and weight would be. I had to go to France to get some actual dimensions off the boat and make sure that what I was going to build was going to fit properly. So I got to France um, with tape measures and laser levels and got to work measuring. So I'm using the weld lines on the main tube from when the tube was originally constructed as my datum points for the measurements. I've got these perfectly horizontal, the, the horizontal lines, um, and they're about accurate to about two millimeters. So what I've done is I take the circumference of the tube, which is 2 pi r, 2 times 3.14 times the radius, divide that by 4, and you should have the dimension from that weld line down to the center line of the bottom of the boat. I use a sea searcher magnet to hold the tape measure in place. Uh, sea searcher magnets are for picking up, they're quite strong magnets, they're for picking up bits that you've dropped in the water. I have to say the only thing I've ever recovered with sea searcher magnet was itself, when the rope came off and I used a bit of steel, I dropped that down and managed to recover the magnet. Anyhow, so the reason why these dimensions are so important is because there's about a one and a half centimeter difference um, in the shape of the tube from the front to the rear, so it's slightly egg-shaped. And it's important to get this right because I'm going to be building the keel in the UK in my garage and I'm going to be taking a cross on the ferry to France and I have about eight, nine days to cut out the bottom of the boat, weld the keel up and paint it. So I don't want to have the situation where I get there and I have to start welding in little extra bits or cutting more and more because the keel's going to weigh about 180 kilograms and it's going to be on wheels but it's not the sort of thing you want to be jacking up and then dropping off every few minutes, you know, um, too many times. So I took all those dimensions and plotted them onto bits of paper to try and get some idea of the twist and shape of the hull. And just before I left, I saw this tractor. Yeah, that's, that's, they had to use a crane apparently to get it out. So of all the measurements gathered from France, I returned to a very cold and wet UK to come up with a design. So this is why I had to balance all those requirements that I had against the constraints to come up with the best compromise. One of the main things I wanted to do was increase buoyancy, um, but that had to come at minimal weight gain. Um, also, I had to worry about the fact that when I put her up on a concrete slipway, I didn't want her leaning over too far, although I can offset that with small skegs on the outriggers. Um, also, I had to worry about the cost and reduce the amount of steel usage and steel wastage. Then I went online and searched for my NACA aerofoil and got the various dimensions from that. I plotted it into a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and then you just take your measurements straight off that Excel spreadsheet and plot it straight onto the steel. So I finalized that, that whole design and um, ordered my steel and then it came time to actually start the work. So with the design finalized, uh, it's come time to make the first cuts. So this is my plasma cutter setup. So there's a compressed, uh, big compressor up there feeding compressed air down through the tube into this little plasma cutter. And this is so much better and easier to use than oxyacetylene. Uh, it cuts up to about 7 millimeters, and it just uses that little torch there. You press the button and it cuts. So I've drawn out my base plate of the keel here. And you can see that I've widened it out um, because what I drew upstairs, when I got down to reality, it, I just looked at it and thought I could get quite a bit more buoyancy for very little extra weight. So I just widened out that little bit. This is a NACA aerofoil, uh, NACA 18, it's quite wide. Um, but the reason is, is because I, as I really was facing all those various um, constraints, such as you know trying to match the buoyancy with the water tank size and everything. But it should, it should be a nice design. That's about it for this one. So onward with the keel. Thanks very much for watching.